Hello, everybody, and it's Katiri. Hello, it's Owen on Kylock. And welcome to the Soothsayer's Tea, Tarot Talk, The Hierophant. Yeah, we're going to be talking about The Hierophant, or The Pope, slash The Shaman, Um, but we'll get into that. We can definitely get into into that. that. I will Mm -hmm. say we've had to go on a little break, and I'm very happy to be having this conversation because... I really like just talking about tarot cards in general. Um, These episodes, at least for myself, they're so easy. They're so effortless. And I'm, I'm quite happy to be going back to them. Yeah. It's a lot more, um, I guess, straightforward because like we can talk about tarot. Tarot is not a problem. It's a tarot podcast because we can talk about tarot. And then the feature episodes, we have to talk about other stuff, and that's when it gets a little messy. <laughs> yeah, because we're kind of stupid, and that's okay. We're stupid, but we also have very strong opinions, and it's a horrible combination. <laughs> it's a terrible combination. Um, but the one thing that we do have knowledge on, and that we will flex about, is tarot. We know a lot about tarot, so we're going to get into it. So the Hierophant, just a little bit of history of the card, or at least where it it was inspired from um is the pope it's the pope the pope the catholic pope (laughs) the catholic pope yeah um even though i wouldn't necessarily say that anymore like my associations with the card don't really line up with my associations of the pope yeah so when it comes to traditions the reason why the pope was chosen for this card is because the um religion and especially organized religion back in the day had such a significant foothold into everyday society um, that this was basically going to be the educator card. So it's interesting that even though it is the Pope and there's a lot of symbology here about um, basically God's um, avatar on earth and such, the card is actually not really spiritual in nature. It's actually a lot about traditions it's a lot about education and um, almost higher knowledge. And when we say higher knowledge is that it's not like the high priestess, which is very much so intuitive thought and feeling and subconscious. This is very much so a card of study. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I would say the high priestess would be more personal knowledge, knowledge of yourself a little bit, whereas the hierophant is knowledge of like the world and like, like, like proper formal education. Yeah, it's very much so a card of actual social groups. And again, Mm -hmm. uh, keep in mind is that back in the day, um, nobody had internet. Nobody had, you know, Tumblr blogs where they can get a little community together. Um, The community was the church, right? So when you are in a small town or a little village and you have um, basically a religious leader, it had... I wouldn't say less to do with religion. Obviously, it had a lot to do with religion, but it had a lot to do with basically, again, social groups and conformity and traditions. Organizations. Yeah. Like it's the thing. Yeah. Like it's the Pope. It's not necessarily it. There is aspects of religion to the Hierophant, but it's not so much about religion as it is about organization. And in the good old days, back in the good old times, the church was the organization it was the organization it was the social organization that everyone was a part of yeah because this individual would um do funerals they would do christenings they would do weddings they would do like it was very much so that part of community and i find it's interesting because i had a difficult time connecting to this card for a while because i've always saw it as a very religious card but and i didn't feel like the keywords kind of connected to it but now that i think of it more it's definitely more a card of a community authority than an actual um religious card and it's not authoritative like the emperor where the emperor is kind of authoritative because the emperor kind of makes tough decisions he's almost warlike um the emperor is very much so about community building Mm -hmm. sorry the higher fan is about community building oh yeah yeah um yeah i would say very much that the emperor is sort of in it for himself he wants the like he wants the power and he wants to control people whereas the higher higher i can't even say the name i genuinely cannot say the word higher the elephant the elephant um, yes is very much more a power like someone that you would look up to a figure that you would like do what they told you to do 
even though they're sort of reluctant about it. They don't necessarily want this power and this status, but they have it and they're respected. Yeah, they're in their position because they help people. Um, I've And when we say help people, it's not in the same case of like healing or something of the sort. Um, if you notice across the Major Arcana, there's really no card that is very obviously education because this is the education card. This is the card of education. Um, this is an individual who is very, very well versed in what he does. And it's not in the same sense of the magician where the magician's kind of, you know, fucking around and finding out, right? Um, the Hierophant knows what they're doing because they're old, they're well established, they've studied, and they've studied traditions. So if we want to go in a more modern sense, if we want to go in a pra- practitioner sense, um, it's like the people who, um, go out of the way, kind of feel out things, do things with intuition and intention when it comes to their craft compared to somebody following an actual old established rite with a particular ritual with a lot of history behind it. That would be more of a hierophant type energy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you'd sort of see it in like the high priestess would be more folk magic and folk traditions, whereas the hierophant would be more ceremonial and organized religious tradition. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Um, And if we want to, again, pull that back into real life, um, or real life, you know what I mean? If you Mm -hmm. want to pull that into (laughs) like everyday life, I should say, it's definitely a card of education. It's doing things the traditional way. It's like, figure out that math equation and doing, like figuring out all the little tools that are set in stone that don't change because they work. Yeah. I would lean even towards saying that it's formal education. Um, There is, of course, aspects of sort of personal and self-education, but I would say this is very much like an established organization educating you, so like a school or like a university. Yeah, this is definitely a 100% conventional education Mm -hmm. type of card. Um, It's not fucking around and finding out. It's doing the things the right way. And there's one way to do it and you do it the right way because there will be success there. Um, with that being said, I don't ever read it as a harsh card. I, it was difficult for me at first, but once I kind of came around to it after a few years, um, I feel like it's a very necessary card, um, especially nowadays, because I think a lot of people kind of feel things out too much, which there's nothing wrong with that. But sometimes you need to have the know-how behind it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, even like, I think it's the, God, it's been a while since I've seen a Rider Waite Smith deck, but um, if I'm correct, and I believe I'm 99% sure that I am, there are two keys at the bottom of the card crossed. Yep. yep. Yeah. And those, um, or at least to me, would represent like the conscious and the subconscious. Like this person is very much in control. There is that little bit of like religious and mysticism, like with the subconscious and knowing yourself, but it's very well balanced with the conscious world and the physical world around you. And that would be the formal education and sort of like educating yourself i definitely agree that it's not a super harsh card i know i've probably said the word formal six times in eight minutes but i do see it as a formal card so it's sort of like meeting your partner's parents for the first time yeah it's a card that's very um surgical Mm -hmm. it's a very surgical card in a way where you can't deviate and you can't get you can't get experimental or creative with surgery you do it the right way You study it and you take all the steps from step one, two, three, and you don't mess with it. You just do it the right way and you do it right. Um, Mm -hmm. And it comes into a sense of, again, this type of individual or this type of energy is so well established because it works. Yeah, it's, it's, it's proven. It's got results um, is the thing as well. It's also, it's sort of a card of, getting those results i wouldn't necessarily say that if you were like i wouldn't like interpret the hierophant as a like results card but i would say that taking the advice of the hierophant will lead to results in that sort of way yeah exactly and it's funny that when we did our future episode when we were complaining about cults we actually went on the emperor with this one which you'd think that the hierophant being like the high priest being the leader of like kind of a religious congregation would be you'd think that would be the target for the cult episode but actually not (laughs) quite right because again the hierophant's not in it for control they're in it to better mankind Mm -hmm. right they don't yeah they have the power reluctantly they're kind of nerdy 
Yeah, actually, I'd 100% agree. Like, it's very much more they would rather be sort of curled up with a book than being in power and making these decisions and helping people make these decisions. But they also have, like, a moral obligation to do these things. And so they're doing them because of that. Yeah, because it's they're nerdy in a way that they don't... They just want to correct things, not because they want to be in power. It's just like, you know, this is actually just the right thing to do. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, they, like, they believe in sort of the betterment, but in what like their opinion like what if they see something that could be better they're gonna fix it they're very much they're busybodies they fix things (laughs) yeah and it's not even like it's so much like oh in their opinion oh there's no opinion there they have like two thousand years of traditions here when they know it works like it's not about their opinion it's about like oh i've done this eighty thousand times and it works every time so it's gonna happen so it can come off a little forceful not so much in a way of overbearing or again forceful but more or less just like i know better than you and you believe them (laughs) yeah sorry 100 percent. you would i like at the end of the day i really like i can't repeat more that if someone in your life is the hierophant or there's someone in your life that you associate with the hierophant you would go to them for advice and it's not going to be like sort of motherly advice where they'll sort of hold your hand and help you get through it and be there for you emotionally as well it's more so like, I guess, fatherly advice. And of course, I'm using these like very traditional definitions of motherly and fatherly, but I'd say it's very much like a, hey, son, this is what you gotta do. And less so like, oh my God, King, are you okay? Would you like a hand? Would you like to be helped? It's very much so that card of, you know what? When I got a job when I was a kid, I just went up and I asked to speak with a manager and I get the job right. It's the that's yeah. the hierophant <laughs> yeah it's the, it's it, that's the hierophant <laughs> yeah now with that being said they can be a little out of touch because of their traditions they don't step outside the box in any way shape or form this mm-hmm. is a very narrow card yeah um, it, it's horse blinding horse blinders <laughs> yeah absolutely um mm-hmm. which is not ever a bad thing i have again i've grown affection for this card it is actually um ruled by taurus which is my sun sign um mm-hmm. which is Again, it's definitely that card that's just like, it's always moving forward. It's always moving forward. It's always trying, like... It's always... There's always something that you can do better. Yep. And yep. it's... But it's not... Again, it's not experimental. I can't make that clear enough. It's just like, you don't screw with yeah. what they figured out. Like, they make an apple pie and they make it the exact same way that their mother made it and their grandmother made it and their great-grandmother made it. And if you make any deviation to that, if you may put one more extra grand of sugar in that apple pie they're going to faint Mm -hmm. yeah exactly if you think that apple pie would be better with cinnamon no (laughs) get away from it make your own apple pie you this is breaking the tradition an absolute like infidel get out of your house (laughs) (laughs) yes absolutely i would agree with that 100 percent Absolutely. So if we want to go in the parallels again, when it comes to the conscious, the super conscious, sorry, so conscious, subconscious, super conscious, this is still in the conscious realm, right? So we can mm-hmm. still recognize this as, uh, again, an educator. Um, it's kind of paralleled with the hangman and the mm-hmm. sun. So the hangman is basically, again, the hierophant does do a lot of sacrificing to be able to, for the better good. And then the sun is joyous success. So there's always a working towards success when it comes to the Hierophant. It's, I don't ever think it's a cold card because even when it's reversed, which I don't personally do reversals, but if you do reversals, it always just means kind of freedom. There's very little negative to do with the Hierophant, really. I, and see, this is where I would slightly disagree because I read reversals. Um, I would definitely, like, I would read the Hierophant as someone who's maybe a little bit closed-minded, not really prepared for change. Um, it's someone that you're really, really, really going to have to convince that they are wrong and that you are doing it the right way. I wouldn't say they're egotistical in that sense, but I would say that they're very set in their ways and very much not open to the possibility of someone else knowing better than them. Yeah. Oh, it's a complete brain donkey. Like, And, and yeah. again, context is everything. But what I mean by like a negative card is that I feel like somebody just not working with you you can always walk away from that it's not going to really affect you if that makes Mm -hmm. any sense yeah they're not they're not a vindictive card they're not vengeful no it's uh, i say this in context is that there could be definitely worse cards out there (laughs) 
Yeah. I mean, look, if you're pulling the Hierophant for someone in your life, eh. It's when you start pulling the Emperor that you gotta worry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just one, like... I will never stop shitting on the Emperor. We are, like, we're, we're three episodes. This is our third episode and I'm still shitting on the Emperor and I think he deserves it. Yeah. And again, if we want to look at that, because the Emperor kind of evolves into the Hierophant, which evolves into the Lovers, right? Um, which we'll, again, discuss in a future episode, but the Lovers, kind of that parallel right beside it is coming into that traditions, right? Um, which is funny because I find a lot of new decks now are actually breaking traditions, uh, especially when it comes to gender roles. And such, uh, which I greatly appreciate. But when we say Hierophant is that in those traditions is that it's still a sense of community and love and coming together, right? That's yeah. still their end goal. They're not in this position to have authority. They're in this position to, again, better the community, which is kind of a stark contrast to the emperor, which they're authoritative because they just want to be in charge. Yeah, I think a good way to describe it would the Emperor would mansplain something to you, whereas the Hierophant wouldn't. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I know that, again, I know you have a hate boner for the Emperor, but I feel like the Emperor is necessary at times. Oh, 100%. I do. I definitely see the value in the Emperor. I just personally wouldn't want to see myself become the Emperor. And someone in my life who is associated with the Emperor is someone that I'm typically going to distance myself from a little bit. Which is funny because we have the spiciest opinions. I'm sure there's somebody listening to this like, are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> are you sure? Are you? Are you? Are you sure? Um, so when it comes to our experiences, when it comes up, how does it come up in your type of re- Like when it comes up in readings, where do you see a lot of it kind of appearing for you? Well, I would like to sort of preface this. Preface? Preface? Preface this. Yeah, preface this by saying that the reason that me and Ven sort of may have, like, or Kateri may have sort of slightly differing positions is because of our clients. And so because I am younger than Grandma here, I tend to get (laughs) um, younger clients. So this would be sort of maybe late teens, so like 18, 19, to 30-ish. And the way that the Hierophant sort of comes up for me is usually going to be if this person is about to go into higher education or they're about to go back to higher education. Um, So for a lot for me, what it means is that this person needs to formally educate yourself. It could be sort of going back to school and getting your master's or your PhD. Um, I recently had a client actually who was just coming towards the end of her master's and the Hierophant was in the sort of past position where they were coming like so this person was they had done the journey that they had been educational and (laughs) they had been educational and now they are going to help people with that knowledge they're going to use that education and it is going to allow them to prosper so I would see the Hierophant as definitely sort of a good omen when it comes to your future it just means that you sort of have to work a little bit for it first. Yes. And I don't deal with a whole lot of educational um, readings when they does come up for whatever reason, the higher fans not usually there. Um, but that's just wow. my experience, but it comes up a lot in people with relationships. And I think that, like you said, that comes into our difference in client base where a lot of my clients are looking for marriage. They're Mm -hmm. seeing what the next step is, right? They're single and they're, once they do find somebody, the next logical step would be to get married, right? Yeah. They're looking Um, for a serious relationship. They're very much so looking for a serious traditional relationship, Mm -hmm. right? So the Hierophant, when it comes up for me, I find it actually comes up quite a bit in the love readings that I offer with clients and again i do it has come up in like educational pursuits definitely but for whatever reason it does come up a lot in people i shouldn't say some odd reason i already know exactly what happens when it comes up and goes <laughs> like, you're, look, you're looking to get married you're looking to get hitched aren't you and they're like yes <laughs> right they're very much yeah. so looking they're settled down at that point right mm-hmm. um so i see that a lot again i see it a lot in my type of readings that people are settling right and when i say settling i don't mean like bad settling as in they're like okay I've done all the wild stuff. Now I just want to have a nice little traditional like relationship where again, I can cook apple pie. 
for my missus, right? They're looking for something that is what their parents had, right? They're tired. They work all the time, <laughs> right? Um, they've done all their traveling. They've done all their They've fun. had their midlife crisis. <laughs> they've had their midlife crisis, exactly. Um, so mm-hmm. I find this comes up quite a bit in love and it usually comes into just like, you know what? You don't need like, things exciting. You just need to do things the right way. And yeah. honestly, it's it's finding like, what's what's the basis of love? Like paying attention to each other and things like that. And I find it's very interesting because I can pull a lot from this card, right? Because that's why I can kind of almost get into like my little psychologist hat goes on, like on my head where I'm just like, okay, so how are you treating each other? Are you treating each other like the standard um, ways you should be treating each other, which is listening to each other? Like you can actually suss quite a bit from this card when it comes up, especially in a place of blockage, because I'm like, you're not actually doing the right things that you should be doing in a relationship. Because it doesn't have to be complicated. It does have to be, sometimes it's just like the little basic things that you're just missing because you are too focused on something else. So I actually, it's funny because again, this comes into a card, again, higher education, like shows up in a love reading. What the hell does that mean? (laughs) Sometimes it means going back to traditions and going back to basics. Yeah. Um, I honestly, I only think I've pulled the hierophant um a couple times in readings not it's like love readings it's not something that comes up an awful lot for me but again that would be down to sort of our like difference in client base where my clients won't really be looking for something as serious so soon um and if it does come up in that context it's usually a negative card and it's talking about um wanting different things in the relationship and sort of there being that difference between the I would say the high priestess and the hierophant. I think when you're a little bit older in life and you've gotten past some things, I think the hierophant and the high priestess can be a really great couple. But I think early on in life, it's not, it doesn't work out as well. Yeah. And I think this is actually almost important of making sure that you're finding a reader that fits you because I never tell people that I can read everybody and every, uh, anybody because there's going to be clients that are not going to fit me and vice versa. And the main reason why is that there is a little part of us that go into all of our readings as well, right? Mm -hmm. Um, For me, if I come across like a student and they're really like chaotic, for example, that's going to show up in my readings because I'm going to pick up on that, right? Mm -hmm. I'm going to pick up on that and my cards are going to respond accordingly when they leave my fingertips. For somebody like yourself, who is a ball of chaos, you're just like, Uh this is normal, right this is me. yeah exactly <laughs> I, I i tend to more align a little bit more with that energy yeah. um so you might um, actually have a reading that is um i wouldn't say more effective but might basically well obviously something. it would be more effective because i'm the superior tower reader it's but... <laughs> <laughs> um yeah no i i 100 agree with that i think that also like that is something that you really need to look for if you were looking for a tower reader you need to sort of Feel it out a little bit. Look for different sort of people. Because obviously all people are tower... I mean, like all tower readers are people. And all people are different. And so each tower reader is also going to be completely different. Like if you come to me and you come to Kateri, sure, you might get the same sort of core message for a reading if you ask the same question. But it won't be the same. Yeah, exactly. Like I might pull cards and it might be... I'll pull cards and I'll be like, calm down, slow slow your roll. And then you might pull cards and be like, mm, valid. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, <laughs> you're, that makes you're sense. validated to freak out, right? Yeah. Because again, that might be just our difference of interpretation styles mm-hmm. too, right? Rel- relatable, relatable with, reading. With that being said, do not go to multiple readers about the same issue over and over and over mm-hmm. and over again. Don't, mm-hmm. you do definitely want to shop around, but you don't want to get to the point that you're trying to find one specific answer and you're trying to get somebody to validate you. Yeah, that is very bad practice because that is just all you're going to do is you're going to end up finding a grifter who will tell you what you want to hear and then you'll start giving them money and then you're supporting grifters and that's just bad. Yeah, exactly. Um, So it's a delicate balance. Honestly, feel it out. I feel like I just had to throw that in there um, just because I find it very interesting that um, where you say that with your client base skewing a little younger, um, that how it kind of, how this card uh, like basically applies for you and I'm like you know what it doesn't actually come up my in my student readings that often mm-hmm. and you're like it always comes up in my student readings I'm like that yeah. makes sense it's absolutely it, valid it's genuinely one of the cards I pulled the most yeah for like, which is, other people 
with that being said, I don't want anybody to expect like my students are some of my favorite clients. Like they're, they're really, really good. Uh, I think that again, we're just pulling from different energies and Mm -hmm. again, finding your uh, readers, your best bet. Yeah. So let's talk about pop culture connections. Yeah. This one was a struggle. I'm not going to lie. I struggled with this one. Um, But I did sort of manage to find a connection or two connections. Um, The first one being someone that is not super pop culture. He's not not super popular. So some of you may not know him. But if any of you have watched Grey's Anatomy, there is a spinoff show called Private Practice about Addison Montgomery. And one of the doctors that she sort of works with is Pete slash Peter. Mm -hmm. Second name omitted. Um, And if any of you have watched this show, you will definitely sort of see the Hierophant in Pete. Um, It's not a perfect example. I think Pete might be a little bit too selfish sometimes to be the Hierophant. But the energy is definitely there. The Pete, in my opinion, at least in the earlier seasons, because I haven't finished the show yet, um, is very much at that stage in his life where he's evolving from the Emperor into the Hierophant. Yes. See, I can't agree or disagree with you because I have not watched it. Not because of any reason other than I'm really lazy at TV. Um, but I do have some two really big ones, which are basically very parallel to each other. Because um, I do find it really kind of connects to both these characters is basically any wizard in any fantasy show ever. So Dumbledore and Gandalf is the Hierophant. Yeah, I would 100% agree with that. Yeah, because those are characters that, especially like Dumbledore, like he's, when he's taking care of Harry, he's always kind of imparting wisdom, but it's always very gentle and kind. But he's obviously an authority in the school. He's the headmaster. Mm -hmm. And he's there because of basically his educational prowess. Like he's just strong because he's so knowledgeable. And with Gandalf being like a billion hundred years old and basically being in some of those higher type of um, echelons. It's been a little while since I've um, read Lord of the Rings, but basically he was probably like the original, um, for lack of better terms, like original elder gods in the whole... um, in the whole kind of series again i know there's a tolkien fan just like their ear screaming right now yeah they're screaming losing they're, their mind their i would say very brain much is trying to like escape their year right now but gandalf <laughs> is very old and he's in a position of power but he still goes to little guys he still goes mm-hmm. to the hobbits and he still like takes care of them and he hangs out with them because he's very down to earth mm-hmm. yeah, but he's absolutely. also will yell at a few people because if you're being stupid you're being stupid mm-hmm. Yeah, 100%. Um, And then my final, I almost said social media, pop culture um, comparison, would be Gibbs from the original NCIS. Yes. And I very much, I'm rewatching that show right now. I love NCIS. It made me want to be a forensic scientist. I was in love with Abby Shudo. Um, uh, Gibbs, the way that Gibbs treats the people below him, um, is very much sort of like stern but with their best intentions at heart. He truly wants to push them to be sort of the best that they can be and educate them. And he does provide a lot of education. Um, He's very much that sort of teacher figure. And also formal organization, like NCIS, like that's, it works. It's perfect. It's a beautiful analogy, if I do say so myself. (laughs) It is a good one. And I think that it's important is that the Hierophant might be smug, but he never punches down. Right, yeah. he's not there to step on somebody's neck to be able to get ahead. Um, there's he also, smug... I would definitely say he def- he defends the little guy. He yeah. works for the underdog a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. Um, they're very much so. Again, they're I wouldn't arrogance not the right term at all. They're definitely very very um, confident in their abilities and confident in their knowledge, but they're they're very giving. They're very, mm-hmm. it's a generous card. It's a very generous Even card. Even if it's sometimes they're a little bit smug about it. Oh, they're, they're absolutely smug. And mm-hmm. honestly, they deserve it. Yeah. Um, this is a little bit off the beaten path a little bit, but it's definitely the feeling that I get um, is Vision from Marvel mm-hmm. as well. Because literally he has the Mind Stone, right? Yeah. It's all about that higher thought 
right? And I, I just going back to when he first came on, like they first introduced him in this the series or in the um, MCU, is that everybody was kind of in awe of him, but he was very calm, mm-hmm. and he was they're almost like a little afraid of him because they couldn't figure it out. And then he picked up the hammer and they're like, Oh shit. Okay. Oh damn. Yeah. Because it was I a would actually quiet authority. Mm-hmm. I would actually say as well that, um, at least in one division, mm-hmm. the show, I have not read any of the comics. I'm ashamed to admit, but, um, vision and Wanda are very much the, like the good couple of the hierophant and the, pre- the high priestess. And yes. they are very much that representation in the little bit later in life, uh, the Hierophant and the High Priestess. Yeah. And it's funny because the High Priestess is definitely paired with the uh, Magician because they're kind of polar opposites. Mm-hmm. But I actually find that the Hierophant and the High Priestess are actually better matched with each other. I 100% agree with that. Yeah. Yeah. The Hierophant is actually more of the direct i wouldn't say yeah it's direct parallel well the magician is more of the opposite yeah the, the perpendicular priestess. yeah exactly um Matt. <laughs> so that is funny because that actually 100 percent makes sense wanda is the high priestess well mm-hmm. visions i actually like event. that just like i noticed that while we were talking about while you were talking about vision i was like oh shit wanda yeah like it, it, it is a really really good example in pop culture of the higher refund and the high priestess and how they work together and how it can be very positive and a very strong relationship while also having a little bit of its downsides as well yeah exactly and it, it that comes into basically wanda just kind of emotional right and mm, she makes mm-hmm. a lot of decisions on her emotions which is not a bad thing um no she's just vision... she's very intuitive in that way exactly well vision can be a little narrow although he loves her to death right mm-hmm. but he can be a little narrow because it's just like this is the way to do things um especially when he was kind of keeping her captive and i can't remember which was a civil war yeah i think it was civil war where he was kind of keeping her captive because that was the right thing to do right mm-hmm. that's just what you do bud oh my god yeah sorry i literally i was sitting here thinking i was like i don't remember this at all but it did just come to me yeah, yeah. i didn't like civil war <laughs> yeah that's fair and that comes into it's like there's so many parallels there um, between uh, Vision, I find that's actually a really good example of a more like, quote unquote, modern sense, um, mm-hmm. or somebody who's not necessarily old. Um, yeah. It's just somebody who kind of really still experienced. Art. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. Yeah. So I think this went a little bit longer, I think, just because we got nerdy about this card. I yeah. honestly, I have a, an affection for this card strictly because I didn't like it. And now yeah. I really like it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And I, I feel like there's a lot of cards like that, especially in the Major Arcana, where I'm just like, ew, gross. And then once <laughs> I got to know more, I was just like, actually, this is pretty dope. Yeah. I can honestly say that the higher <laughs> the elephant, is, elephant. Yeah, the elephant is one of my favorite cards to read. I can find it like I can pick up on the higher elephant very easily in the context behind it. Um it's just it's very it feels very straightforward to me. And I can also say that I think this has been my favorite episode. Ah! Yeah. It's, it's I mean, though. we'll see what's to come in the future, but so far, this is 100% my favorite. It's it's just it's so easy. And again, mm-hmm. I feel bad for my personal feelings towards Hyrule Fan because I was like, I couldn't understand it. And now that I do, I'm just like, this is the easiest card. It's so mm-hmm. smooth and it's, it's, it's smooth like peanut butter. <laughs> Liquid smooth by Mitski. <laughs> <laughs> If anyone, for the context of this, we usually will see this episode on Monday. If you scroll just a little bit far back on my Twitter, like a couple tweets, you will see the last four days me tweeting about Mitski concert that is coming up in Dublin and how desperately and badly I needed tickets and how I'm fucking, I didn't get the tickets. I had two pre-sale codes for two different days, didn't get them either of those days. And then on the general on sale, they sold out within seconds and I was insanely raging. And then I'm trying to scalp tickets online, but we won't talk about that. <laughs> now, thank you very much, everybody. This has been the Soothsayer's Tea. I am Onan Kylock. You can find me on Twitter at the same name. And I will also be running the Soothsayer's Tea Twitter, which you can also find at Soothsayer's underscore T, I believe. Everything is in the description below anyway. So you'll figure it out. Yeah. Good luck figuring it out because we are a disorganized mess. But I am Katiri from Vinoxus. You can find me on Vinoxus.net and also Vinoxus across Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, which is my home. 
you will also see me running the Soothsayers T Instagram. Um, and if you have any questions, feel free to shoot me a message. I do absolutely bite and I hate everybody. Mm-hmm. Me too. But I will also respond to your messages <laughs> if you DM me. Um, yeah. Thank you very much, everybody. We will see you on Friday. See you on Friday. Bye. Bye.